So let's go on to doing round four. Going to be doing uh, basically asking you questions like, you know, how many how many DLLs is this thing import? Where does the import names table start? Where does the import address table start? What's the RVA of a particular entry and things like that? So go ahead and start playing with round four and ask me any questions if it's not clear how to find the information. So here's an interesting thing on my screen right now, actually. Arguably, in this sort of question, I said, this is one where I'm not asking any interpretation. I'm just saying, tell me the literal value. I said, image optional header, data directory, index, and then you know I use the constant image directory entry import. So that's index one. You'd have to go back and look that up, sort of. For index one dot RVA, I said dot RVA. I probably should have said dot virtual address because that's the actual structure field name. But again, there's an RVA and there's a size. The RVA is actually named virtual address. Oh, I missed. I forgot. I accidentally skipped one thing with you guys actually, or possibly it's like the next slide. One miscellaneous thing I didn't cover that I should have. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah. There was one last thing I was to see. I actually follow my slides and wait until I get to the game, and it's all good. So one last thing. In the data directory, there's actually an extra thing that's basically like a shortcut to the IAT. Let me make sure this is on. There's a shortcut to the IAT, the base of the IAT itself. And it's this image directory entry IAT. So you have to keep the difference between this index one is image directory entry import, and then index, I don't know, 14 or 13 or something like that, is image directory IAT. And so whereas image directory import points at this array of you know per DLL structures, image directory IAT goes directly to the start of the IAT. So if I'm asking you something about this index, that's what I'm asking for. See, I'm trying to be nice to you by not like asking you for the constant, like what's data directory entry 13 or something like that. I'm trying to say image directory entry IAT versus image directory entry import. So sorry, forgot to cover that. Now get your game. Question was what section is the import directory table in to find that out? Do we look in these section headers? So there's a couple of ways you can. Whoa. Okay, there's a couple of ways you can figure that out. So if it says, you know, what section is a particular thing in, if you can parse it with PView, the simple, easy, one might say cheating way, is just wherever you find that data. So like on my screen right now, I have the .r data section, and you can see that the import directory table is, you know, within the .r data section. The right way to do it is that you go to, you know, you find the RBAs of interest, and then you figure out, are those RVAs within a particular section? So you look at the section header information, which we learned about in the previous section, right? and say, all right, well, if my optional, you know, if my optional entry says that the import table is at 2224, right, that's the RVA. I need to say which section contains 2224. I'd look at the dot text section. I'd say it goes from RVA 1000 to 1804. So OK, 222. Four is greater than 1,804, so it's not in the dot text. Move to the R data. It goes from 2,000 to 2,005D4. All right, 2 to 2, 4 is less than 2,5D4. Therefore, it's in the dot R data section in this particular case. But yeah. So it can only be in one section. Yes. Right now. So when we say, you know, what section it's in, it's because, you know, the table is going to be put somewhere in memory. That memory is going to, in some way, you know, be within a section, basically. Because if it wasn't in a section, it would never get mapped from file into memory, basically. All right, let's uh, go on to the competition. Everybody, cancel out your uh, existing Python's. Run Python binhunt.py4. Enter two for class mode. And await the seed. Seed is seven four three one. There we go, that's the question he was just asking about. 
How you find that is you have to go to the optional header, the data directory, index one. You gotta say which RBA is it, and you figure out which section it's in. Or you can cheat and go into PView and just find wherever it is, whichever section it happens to be under. CFF Explorer also has a way that kind of tells you where it is as well. But I'm sure I'm right Okay, I, I'm getting this question a lot, so let me go over this one more time. This is the thing I just threw at you quick before we jumped into the game. All right, so in the data directory, the main thing I was talking to you first was the import address uh, directory. Okay. In the data directory, the first thing we were talking about was this. The literal string, you know, image directory entry import, right? This is index one. So up here, if I ever ask you for image directory entry import, that's index one up here. But I said there's actually a shortcut. So this, if you want to get to the IAT from this, you got to go through this directory table, and then you go down to this, and then you go down to this, and you, go, you move all over the place. There's built in a shortcut directly to the IAT. And that's from the data directory, but it's index 12 down here. So you go from the data directory at index 12, and so if I'm asking you a question about <clears throat> image directory entry IAT, and I know it kind of wraps around your screen on some of these questions, right, and it's kind of hard to see, but the key thing is whether it's IAT, it's down here. If it's import, it's up here. And all of these in this big array are just tacked on to the end of the optional header. So the data directory, anything about the data directory is all just a big array at the end of the optional header. You'll see that in the CFF Explorer or P view. So it's really a question of whether you go to the data directory entry 12 or data directory entry 1 up at the top. And each entry though, 1 or 12, it's two things. It's an RBA and it's a size. So each of them is a struct with RVA size, RVA size, but each of those is one index. As well. so, so 12 from here would be 0. Zeno, are you able to demonstrate how to do that um, in either of these tools? Sure. Uh, which part did you want shown specifically? How to get to the import entry IAT, for instance? Yes, please. Okay, so in CFF Explorer, you would go to the underneath optional header. CFF Explorer pulls it out independently. So if you go to the bottom of optional headers, you won't see a data directory. But as this indented thing, they've got data directory. Really, it's just tacked on to the end of the optional header, but they're showing it like it's separately. So you need to treat these first two entries like these are the entry 0. So entry 0 RBA, entry 0 size. You go to entry 1, RBA, entry 1, size. And so if I'm asking you a question where I'm literally asking for image directory entry import, based on that slide 45 in section 2, that's index 1. So you would just go right here and you'd either pull out the RBA or you'd pull out the size. And, and uh, I didn't really specify this as well as I perhaps could have, but in CFF Explorer, when you're looking for the values, it's in this value column. Be aware that this offset column, it's really just trying to tell you where that particular data entry is into the file. It's actually a file offset. So it's saying, basically ignore that offset column unless I'm asking you what's the file offset of something. So if I'm asking you for the RBA, you would go and you pull it out of the value column and you throw it in. Now if I was asking you for the image directory entry import, IAT, or just image directory entry underscore IAT, that's that index 12, and so that's down here in this thing called import address table directory RBA. So again, it's, you know, they threw their interpretation at it, and that's what they're calling it, and you pull the stuff out of here or there. In CFF, or sorry, in PE view, the equivalent thing is basically you just go to the optional headers over here in the image MT headers. And then you just scroll all the way to the bottom of the optional headers, and you see that index one is the, it calls it the import table. We would call it the, you know, image directory entry underscore import, because it's index one. 
And if you're asking for image directory entry, image directory entry underscore IAT, that's index 12, and so that's down here. So again, we have 2000 A8 down here. We have 2000, well, these aren't the same files, so, but more or less the same. So in this game, you're basically being asked questions. I could ask you questions about any of these, and I will in later rounds. I'll be asking you about you know, different entries, but for now, it's the only two things in the data directory that have relevance in imports is index 1 right here, and index 12 down here. Yes? If you were asking about the number of entries in the directory table, would you keep them all? Uh, no. I think if, yeah, so if I'm asking about the number of entries in the direct image directory table or import descriptor table or anything like that, don't count the null entry. I, I want to cover this up there as well. So this is another thing that, you know, is down to ambiguity of the tools, but <clears throat> everybody sort of uh, flip your slides to, we're going to say slide. I mean, the thing is, I had to go through this just like you're having to go through this, but I had nobody to tell me the answer. So slide 69, import descriptor from winnt.h. All right, this is the thing where we have three blue things, and we say we only care about uh, we only care about three of this. Right? So on slide 69, if we're looking at this thing in PE view, it's relatively straightforward. So this is the data structure for one of these image directory entries, right? image descriptor tables or whatever you want to call them. The first entry, you know, it's not clear. Original first tone, what is that, right? Well, at least in CFF Explorer and as well as in the actual text description later, I say, you know, that just first thing points to the import names table. And thankfully, PE view tells you right there. It says import names table RVA. Right? So you can find the import names table RVA for this particular DLL at that offset. The last entry is the import address table RDA. You know, in this data structure, it calls it the first one. The reason I wanted you to pull these slides up is because this same data structure over in CFF Explorer is kind of a little weirder, right? We've got a horizontal view of this data structure, and we've got you know the name out here at the front, but then we've also got this name RVA over here. So it's pulling out the name RVA, trying to show that this is the stuff for user 32, this is the stuff for MSVCR. But these columns, okay, and then it adds an extra field. It has the imports. It's trying to like tell you it's pre-counted the number of imports for you, so you don't have to like look it up yourself. But the things that we care about here are this first thing. There's one, two, three, four, five, and so let's start from the very end. Well, it actually you can see the IAT is mentioned right up here in this column name. It says FT is IAT, and for the record, I don't know what the FT stands for. That's actually one of my to-do lists. Just Go ask the guy what the OFT and the FT stand for. But, so we've got a column IAT. Well, this is going to be this first thumb. So we're just taking this and we're rotating it 90 degrees. The last entry up here is first thumb. The second to last entry, name RBA, is name. Third to last, forwarder chain is forwarder chain, right? So this all just maps up with this data structure here. So if I'm asking you about the import names table, that's the first thing. If I'm asking you about the import address table, that's the last thing in that sort of data director entry. So it's clear in P view that import names table is first, import address table is last. But if you happen to be using CFF Explorer, you just kind of have to know, like, I mean, this OFTs, how are you going to know that's the pointer to the import names table? You're not, right? You can maybe know that this FTs, it says IAT, so maybe you can know it, but really it just requires inference, right? What was their interpretation that they applied to this data structure? to give you this view. And so that's pretty much it here. So I just wanted to cover that with everyone since I've had that come up at least three times. Remember, VAs are always just take the base address and add some relative virtual address to it. All right, so I think we've got to go on. I know people are still struggling with this a little bit, but that's OK. Uh, you know, we can ask more questions after the end of the class today. You'll have plenty of time to continue to play with the game and so forth. If you really are, you know, hammering your head against something and you're not getting it, you have to ask me, right? I said, don't be that guy. So thank you for asking, right? Um, so 
as we saw, you know, we just dramatically increased the complexity by going from like just asking you what's the value out of some simple optional header to going to go from here to there to there to there and now add a base address onto that and so forth, right? The next round is even harder. How about that? All right, so this Sean Floyd here. Um, all right. So actually, no, no. Well, the next round's not. No, 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 no. I think it's, well, yeah, actually, no. The next topic is easier. The next topic after that is harder only because the tools do not interpret the data. And so this is, the next round after that is where I said there's potential for a topic where you literally have to look at the hex view and then interpret it as this data structure yourself. So, all right, I'll cover the easy topic and then we'll take a break and we'll come back to Uh, oh, I see a few. Well, I don't have 